Greetings from beautiful Southern California, USA. I'm at the San Onofre Bluffs looking for the Christianitos Fault. The question I have is, who decided to build a nuclear power plant less than a mile from a fault? We're gonna look at some of the geology around here and decipher why they came to the conclusion that that was a good idea. Would you look at this magnificent outcrop? Three distinct layers we see here. We got this lighter tan, it's a sandstone. And then at the very top of that layer, you got a bouldery layer. And then above that, over a hundred feet of dark brown gravels and muds. What's the story here? Okay, so let's begin with this first layer here. This is 30 to 40 feet of sandstone. This formation is called the San Mateo sandstone. And at this location, it's about 30 to 40 feet up, but it continues up the coast about 14 miles and rises over 90 feet down there. Now, what's interesting about this formation is it has a flat top. Anytime you have a bunch of sandstone with a big flat top like that, that's indicative of a wave cut platform. Uh, what's, a, what's a wave cut platform? A wave cut platform is exactly that. It's a platform of rock that's been cut by waves. I mean, look at behind me. If I drain the ocean of all this water right now, what would be exposed? A very long platform of sandstone that was cut by the waves. Well, that's exactly what we have right here. We have sandstone that is a platform, except this is much higher. So what does that mean? Well, that means that the ocean must be lower than it used to be. Or the fact that it's 30 feet high here and 14 miles up the coast, it's 90 feet high, that tilt tells me that this land got uplifted. So it's probably a combination of sea level dropping and the land uplifting. Okay, so just take a second to let that sink in. This is the current wave cut platform. This was the wave cut platform in the past. Everything got lifted up. Okay, you may think, I got that, I got that. But wait a second. We've got two more layers on top of the wave cut platform. How do you get a layer of bouldery stuff right here and then over a hundred feet of brown gravels and muds? Hurry up, tell me the explanation. Inquiring minds want to know. So you're gonna have to use your imagination on this next part. I'm gonna explain what happened. You gotta visualize it, you can do it. Now just stick with me, okay? You ready? Okay, let's imagine that the sea level dropped right now 100 feet. Well, where would the new ocean be? Well, it would be further out that way, right? And what would be exposed? You would have a wave cut platform exposed. A nice horizontal flat piece of sandstone. Okay, you follow me so far? All right, now what happens inland? Well, you still have the same creeks and rivers, right? So they would still be depositing muds and gravels and silts and clays on top of this newly exposed sandstone platform. And that's exactly what happened here. You have the wave cut platform, it's flat. Sea level drops or the land uplifts or both. And then you have rivers and creeks that slowly accumulate all their debris on top of that platform. Now, once the sea level stabilizes and the land doesn't uplift anymore, you get a new shoreline, a consistent shoreline with the high tides and low tides. So then the new wave system can now start cutting away at that platform and creating now this vertical cliff face that we see here. All right, I got that. But like, if, if the waves are only hitting the sandstone down here, then why is up there like perfectly, perfectly vertical? Like, what, what's up with that? <laughs> well, that's a great question. You're right though, the sandstone down here is what gets the brunt of the wave erosion. So how is it that it's nice and vertical like that? Well, as the waves hit this sandstone, it creates a hollow in the cliff. Even though the sandstone resists the erosion, it, it just, the, the ocean's always gonna win. So as it starts to create that hollow, those gravel layers and mud layers on top, they destabilize. And what can happen is you have a catastrophic landslide. And that's what's happened right here. You have. The sandstone was eaten away, destabilized this cliff, which is just muds and gravels. And it came down as a landslide, depositing more debris on top of the wave cut platform. Okay, okay, I get that. Okay, um, I just saw there was like a lot of rocks on the beach, like all that debris, like wh where, do, where do all those rocks come from? What rocks? These rocks. Oh yes, okay. So you got these rocks, right? Well, think about it. You got the sandstone layer, you got the bouldery layer, rocks similar size that we see here on the beach. So 
as the sandstone erodes, imagine a piece of uh, the sandstone falling on the beach. Well, it's going to become sand, right? But above that are these rocks. Those fall out of that matrix and they're more resistant to erosion. So they stick around longer and that's where they all come from. And if you look at them closely, they are beaten up and they are rounded. This shows a lot of wave erosion back and forth, back and forth. Hey Todd, didn't you like say on your story that there was like a fault you were looking for and it was kind of weird they built a nuclear power plant by, by a fault? Yeah, I'm getting there. Thank you, bless your heart. But uh, I got a hike to, to find it and I'm hiking on this bouldery rock, trying not to twist an ankle. We found it, people. San Mateo sandstone thrust on top of the Monterey Shale. Right here is the fault, the Christianitos fault. So why in the world would they install a nuclear power plant 0.9 miles away from the Christianitos fault? <laughs> it's right there, less than a mile away. That nuclear power plant, I'm at the fault right now. I'm at the fault and a nuclear power plant, there's two nuclear power plants, they're right there. Should, should I sound the alarm? Should we evacuate? Not so fast. I'll give you a second to calm down, but that's what I love about geology. You come out in the field, you look at the rocks, and more often than not, the rocks will tell you a story. Sometimes they don't tell you the whole story, they leave pieces out, but they can tell you a story. In fact, they can even tell you if it's safe to install a nuclear power plant less than a mile away from a fault. Okay, you, you, you scare me now. Can you like explain why they built a nuclear power plant uh, so close to fault? That'd be, that'd be great. Have no fear, the law of superposition is here. No, don't click off, don't click off. I know that's a big geologic scary word, but it basically just means, can you look at a sequence like this cliff with these three layers and tell which one came first? Well, the law tells us that more than likely, it's safe to assume that the bottom sandstone layer was deposited first, then the bouldery layer, then the brown gravels and mudstones on top. But it also works with faults. And we have a fault in this system near a nuclear power plant. Let me calm down. So, can we use the law of superposition to tell us why it's safe to build a nuclear power plant here? Okay, let's apply the law. First layer is the San Mateo sandstone on the bottom. Then we got the gravelly boulder layer right there. And then all this was deposited on top. And right here is our fault. But here's something interesting. The fault does not continue through the boulders or through this layer. It stops at the San Mateo sandstone. So what does that tell us? Well, we can illustrate it this way. Here's a little diagram on the beach. So this side represents the San Mateo sandstone. This is the Christianitos fault cutting through. This side is the Monterey shale. On top of all that, we have our bouldery rock layer. And then above all that, we have that brown gravelly mud on top. So when was the Christianitos fault active? Well, it was definitely active when the San Mateo sandstone was here and the Monterey shale was here because it cuts through those layers. But it was not active when this was deposited and it was not active when this was deposited because the fault does not continue through those layers. <laughs> I had to come up here and get a closer look. I honestly don't know how I'm gonna get back down, but I digress, I wanted to show you this. Okay, so we got the San Mateo sandstone here. We got the Monterey shale here. In between them, this is the Christianitos fault. Now notice it goes up, goes up, goes up, goes up, and it stops. It does not pass through or cut our rocky bouldery layer, nor does it cut through our brown muds and gravel above. So this is a perfect example to determine that this fault has been dead or not active for just as long as this here has been deposited, which has been determined around 125,000 years. So this San Mateo sandstone is a great foundation to build a structure on, especially since the Christianitos fault is no longer active. So they dug through that brown gravelly layer and into the sandstone about 35 feet to uh, put their foundation there. And then as you can see, they put, built like a 30 foot seawall. So no earthquake, solid foundation, 
just hope there's not a tsunami. Well, thank you so much for sticking around. I, I really hope you learned something here today. And always remember to stay curious about the earth around you, geologically speaking. <laughs>